Hey guys, welcome to the video. In this video, I'll share with you some of my experiences in Poland. I'll talk about what the vibe was like, what were some interesting places that I visited, and I'll also talk about practical things like how much it cost. Here are some timestamps in case you want to jump to a particular section of the video. Let's get into it. So immediately after visiting Lviv, Ukraine last year, I ended up going to Poland. The three cities I went to in this particular trip through Poland were Poznan, Lublin, and Warsaw. The majority of this video will show attractions in Poznan because I didn't take much footage in Warsaw and Lublin just to let you know. And with that being said, the first city that I went to in Poland was Poznan. I think when most people think of Poland, they don't think of Poznan. They probably think of Warsaw or Krakow because they're more well known. Poznan is sort of a hidden gem in Poland, in my opinion. I learned that there's a lot of museums and a lot of history in Poznan, which is partly why I chose it as one of the cities I would visit. Another reason I chose to go to Poznan first was just a more practical reason, which is the Poznan airport isn't international, and I knew that I would eventually be flying back to California from Poland. And I figured it would make sense to start with the cities in Poland that didn't have international airports and then end with Warsaw, which does have an international airport. And finally, I chose to go to Poznan first because Poznan was the cheapest Polish city to fly to from Lviv. The ticket costs were incredibly cheap and I couldn't pass that up. My experience with the locals in Poznan and Poland in general was good. One thing that Poznan is known for is its universities. There are many students that live there, and so there's a lot of young people. You could say that Poznan is a college town or college city. The younger generation there seem to be somewhat more able to understand and speak English. That said, not knowing the Polish language did make it hard to communicate deeply with most people there. I was, however, lucky in the same way I was in Lviv that I was able to find great friends in Poznan who understood and spoke English very well. And if you're anything like me and you're interested in history, Poland has some very interesting museums and places to visit. Here are my top six places that I visited in Poznan. One, Citadel Park, also known as Park Citadella, is such a nice place. You can get a unique experience of history blended with a nice peaceful walk around a beautiful park. One of my favorite spots in Citadel Park ended up being this really nice pond area with some nice monuments, some nice walkways, and an overall peaceful vibe. They even had a couple mini cafe carts out there where a person could get a warm drink, which I thought was a nice touch. Another interesting attraction in Citadel Park is the Military Museum. They have an array of old planes, tanks, and artillery, mainly from World War II, I think. So if you're a history buff, and especially if you're into World War II history, you would definitely like this. Aside from those things, there are some other noteworthy landmarks and art pieces to see inside Della Park. One of them is the Bell of Peace and Friendship Among Nations, which stands as a symbol of Poland getting its independence from Nazi Germany, among other things, as well as this collection of sculptures known as the Unrecognized Ones by artist Magda Elena Abakanowicz. The implied meaning behind these statues is actually kind of dark. I learned that one of the things they're meant to symbolize is a sort of lingering fear amongst the masses in general. Number two on my list is Old Town Market Square in Poznan. In Old Town Square in Poznan, you will find many shops, bookstores, cafes, and restaurants. It's a nice place to go for a stroll. This area reminded me a lot of Rhinox Square in Lviv, and it was brought to my attention that one of the reasons for the similarities in architecture and other things comes from the fact that Lviv was actually at one point a part of Poland. Number three on my list is the Poznan Goats. In Old Town Square, Poznan, you can find what is probably one of the most famous attractions in Poznan, and that would be the Fighting Goats. Every day at noon, in Poznan's Old Town Market Square, at the cathedral, these two mechanical goats emerge from the clock tower at noon and butt their heads 12 times to signal that it's 12 noon. The origin behind this now 471-year-old tradition is as follows. Legend has it that in the year 1551, a local chef in Poznan was tasked with making a grand feast. This feast was for the then mayor of Poznan and some of his guests. Long story short, there were some mistakes made during the initial prep of the feast. Apparently the chef was cooking venison and he burned the meat, so he had to improvise. On a whim, he decided to try and catch a couple of nearby goats so that he could use them for the feast. After being dragged to the kitchen, the goats escaped. 
As they ran away from the chef, it is said that the goats ran up the stairs into the cathedral clock tower. A few moments later, the goats emerged from the clock tower and began fighting and butting heads. Luckily for the chef and the goats, the mayor, his guests, and the other onlookers were amused by all of this. The chef was pardoned and the goats were set free. The mayor, inspired by this funny event, ordered that two mechanical goats be built into the clock tower so they could emerge like a cuckoo clock and thus this tradition was born. Number four on my list would be the Imperial Castle, which is another great attraction in Poznan. It makes for a great interactive museum experience if you're interested in that sort of thing. I actually dedicated a whole YouTube video to the Imperial Castle tour, so if you're interested in a more in-depth look at that, there's a link there above to that video, and there's also a link below in the description. Number five on my list is the Archdiocesan Museum. This is another one of the great museums in Poznan. If you're interested in a more in-depth look at that. Another link should now pop up right here to a full video I made about it, and there's another link below in the description. And finally, number six on my list is Brahma Poznania, which is on Cathedral Island in Poznan. It's another interactive museum featuring a full audio tour. I did it in about one hour, and this interactive tour takes you on a journey through the history of Poznan. Definitely worth checking out if you're ever visiting there. And the ticket prices were very reasonable. As you've probably already guessed, being in Poland during December and January means it's gonna be cold. By the end of December or early January, just about every day in Poland was near or below freezing. To be honest, I wasn't too much bothered by the cold though. Maybe that was because I was expecting it to be cold and was mostly prepared for it. The thing that did throw me off a bit, however, was a lack of sunshine. I remember that my first couple weeks in Poznan, the sun was set before 4 p.m. and many of the days were cloudy and gray, which isn't surprising as it is said that from November to February, there's just not a lot of sunshine in Poland. In fact, the average amount of sunshine that Poland gets in the month of December is about 28 hours for the entire month. That's an average of less than one hour of sunshine per day. So yeah, that threw me off a little bit, but I was supplementing heavily with vitamin D and I kept myself active, which helped me to make the best of it and helped minimize the mild depression that I was starting to feel due to lack of sunshine. All right, now let's talk a little bit about costs. Overall, I found Poznan and Poland in general to be very inexpensive much like Ukraine. At the time I was in Poland, the exchange rate was one US dollar to about four Poland zloty. To help put things into perspective, I'll reference my average Uber ride cost while I was in Poland and the average cost of my Airbnbs in Poland and how much I paid on average to stay in a couple top rated hotels in Poland. Let's start with Uber. Whenever I wasn't walking to get to my destination, Uber was my go-to source of transportation. For this video, I decided to go through all my Uber ride records from Poland to see what my average ride cost was. The total cost of all my Uber rides in Poland was 1,669.3 zloty, and that was for a total of 86 Uber rides. 1,669.3 divided by 86 is 19.41. So my average Uber ride cost throughout my time in Poland was about 19. 0.41 Poland Zloty, which is just under $5. Pretty cheap. Now let's look at Airbnbs. After reviewing my Airbnb records, I found that while I was in Poland, I spent a total of 38 nights in various Airbnbs, which cost me a grand total of about $1,855, and 1,855 divided by 38 equals 48.81. So my average Airbnb cost while I was in Poland was about $49 per night. Considering the fact that these were mostly top end, very nice Airbnbs, and considering the fact that the average Airbnb cost here in North America is currently $161 per night, I'd say that the Airbnb prices in Poland are pretty good. Now let's talk about hotels. Aside from spending most of my nights in Airbnbs, I spent about two of my weeks in hotels. I don't have receipts or records of my hotel stays to reference, but I can tell you that I used Priceline.com to book my hotels and that I stayed at the Crown Plaza Hotel when I was in Warsaw and Hotel Luxor while I was in Lublin. The cost averaged about $55 to $60 per night. Normally, I don't go for the bougie luxury hotels, but the prices were so affordable, I thought, why not? These were by far 
far the nicest, most luxurious hotels I've ever stayed at in my life. And at an average of 55 to $60 per night, they cost me about the same, if not significantly less than it would have cost to stay at the lowest quality motels here in California. My point in saying this is to illustrate the point that if you are on a budget, Poland is a very affordable country to visit. By my calculations, the average cost of just about everything in Poland would currently be anywhere from two to four times cheaper if you're comparing it to California prices. Overall, I would say that visiting Poland was a great life experience and I would absolutely do it again. I would even go as far as to consider living in Poland for maybe a few months out of the year. Probably the warmer, sunnier months. One of the general things that I noticed about Poland that was different from Ukraine was that the culture there seemed perhaps slightly more in line with Western culture compared to the vibe that I got from Ukraine. Another observation I made is that the Polish language can be a bit challenging to decipher. I'm learning that it's one of the harder languages to master. In terms of correct pronunciation, you really can't get away with just trying to sound things out with this language. One of my favorite examples to illustrate this point is how the name of one of Poland's well-known cities, Wrocław, is spelled in a way that looks nothing like how it's actually pronounced. All that being said, I find it interesting to listen to other languages, and I enjoyed listening to my friends who are native Polish speakers as they talked amongst themselves even though I couldn't understand what they were saying. If you're new to this channel, my name is Jason. Thanks for being here. If you like this video, consider clicking the like button as that can help my video get seen by more viewers who might be interested. And with that being said, I hope to see you here again.